from the Yonkers Statesman, October 9th, 1916. Headline, Germans sink nine vessels. Start submarine activity on American side of the Atlantic. Sharp break in the stock market. German submarine warfare brought to this side of the Atlantic Sunday was pursued relentlessly throughout the night. With the dawn came reports of more vessels torpedoed and sunk. The captain of the Nantucket like ship, off which the attacks on passenger and freight ships were made, reported that three German submarines were operating south and southeast of Nantucket and that a total of nine vessels had been destroyed. The identity of three of this number was unknown, but ships from the American destroyer flotilla at Newport were searching the seas for the crews that were supposed to have taken to their small boats. Rushing to give battle to the submarines, three British cruisers were off Nantucket Shoals at 2.30 a.m. this morning. This was the first appearance of any warships of the British and French patrolling fleet in that vicinity since the submarines began their attacks at 6 o'clock yesterday morning. The richest prize bagged by the Germans yet was the passenger line Stefano, which had just rounded the east end of Nantucket when she fell to a submarine. The vessel, British-owned, was on her regular trip from St. John's, Newfoundland to New York via Halifax and carried 83 passengers, including 30 Americans. Twenty of the latter were making the round trip on the steamer from New York. Secretary of Navy Daniel said the advices he had received indicated that all rules of international warfare had been complied with by the submarines. The Navy Department today began preparations to establish a patrol of warships along the North Atlantic coast to ensure that neutrality was not being violated. Headline, expect vote on trolley question. Repealing ordinance may be introduced tonight by Alderman Davis in Common Council. Mayor may have to take a stand. Steps will be taken, it is probable, at the stated meeting of the Common Council tonight looking to repeal the so-called 15-day ordinance, which prohibits the employment of trolleymen until they have had at least 15 days' experience in operating cars over the local lines. It is thought there is little chance that Mayor Lennon will follow the example set by Mayor Fisk of Mount Vernon and Mayor Griffin of New Rochelle, both of whom brought about the repeal or amendment of the ordinance in their respective cities. Without awaiting action along these lines by the mayor, it is understood that Alderman Davis of the Third Ward, at the request of his constituents, will introduce a repealing ordinance tonight, thus putting up the question of voting yes or no on the question to all the aldermen. All sorts of predictions are being made as to the outcome of such a vote, some going so far as to say that it would be unanimously in favor of repeal, while others declare the ballot might result in a tie, under which Council President Stahl would be called upon to cast the deciding vote. Such repealing ordinance, if adopted by the Common Council, would have to be submitted to the mayor for his approval or veto. The mayor would have ten days in which to make a decision. If he failed to act within that time, the ordinance will become valid without further action. In expectation of action by the Council, it is probable that a large number of spectators, including many trolleymen, will be present at tonight's meeting. It is understood that President Whitridge of the Yonkers Railroad Company has promised that cars would be run if the city ordinance, which now prevents their operation, were removed from the books. Headline, Wireless Waves Carry Messages, How the System Works and Bow Apparatus Can Be Constructed at Home, Importance of Tuning Process, in a section of this article entitled, Wireless Telephones. During the 20 years or so since Hertz made his wonderful discovery of electric waves, radio telegraphy has made many substantial advances toward the goal of perfection, and it stands today a conspicuous brilliant example among many resources to which science has contributed to modern civilization. Its uses are many and very important. Its success in this regard has been spectacular in more than one instance, and it may be not too much to say that radio telegraphy has saved hundreds of lives at sea since the installation of wireless on ships. Formerly, ocean-bound vessels were isolated from the world for days at a time, but now they can communicate with land or other ships at almost any point in their course. Some ocean liners keep in such close touch with events that they publish daily bulletins giving the world's latest news. Messages are sent between Europe and America across a void of air and water, some 3,000 miles in extent. It has proved a great success in time of war. In fact, all the leading nations have equipped their armies and navies with it, and Uncle Sam has the best wireless outfits aboard ships in the world. And that's the news from Yonkers, 100 years ago today.